Because you're going to hear everybody say, oh, he got to play. So we got to send him down to Santa Cruz. Because he can't play here. I think there's something else going on there. And I, I like that. I and we there's something else going on. In there. our pregame <laughs> video we do, uh, you actually teased that very artfully. Um, Sort of. Sort of. But there was user error uh, involved in that. But that's okay. That's okay. There's uh, there's errors every day. We're an imperfect size, Probably aren't that. we? But you're not there yet, huh? You're not there yet with Clay Thompson and Jordan Poole. I'm not there yet either. I'm not there yet. I'm not even close to there, and I don't even know if I ever will get there based on the people involved because I don't – I'm not saying that if Clay comes off the bench, he's going to shut down, but I do know that Clay, since his rookie year, has never, with a capital N-E-V-E-R, he has never come off the bench. And so to me, there's a reason for that. Steph Curry came off the bench, and he – I'm cool with it, whatever. I'll come off the bench. Clay Thompson had never has, even coming back from multiple injuries. Why is that? I think there's a reason for that. Well, maybe it's ego. Maybe it's comfort. Whatever it is, I think, and the way Steve Kerr was so definitive, like, no, that's not even a thing. So, I, I mean, we can have the conversation. I just don't think it's ever going to happen. Uh, I don't know if I don't think it's ever going to happen. Yeah, I guess ever is a little strong. Yeah. Uh, Forever, I'm, ever? I'm not there. You're not there. They're not there. Here's where I am. We're here. We're here. <laughs> Thank you. We're there. You and here. me. For those. Here's here's where I here's where here is. Okay. Here is. I think it's time to at least have the discussion. It's time to have a discussion about putting players in their best position to perform. If I may, Gabe Kapler, there for just a second, right? We we Thank as you. an organization. <laughs> it's always my favorite. You want to put you hear that from every coach, don't you? You want to put players in their best position to succeed. This is the 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 thing that I always laugh at when everyone's like, "Damn it, Kyle, you're so conservative. Let Jimmy cook. Yeah, Jimmy can't cook. Yeah, doesn't even own an apron. Yeah, Jimmy can't cook. So that's not putting Jimmy in his best position to succeed. So let's talk about putting the Warriors in their best position to succeed. We're not there yet. I don't know if we're ever going to get there, and I actually don't know the answer because we can't know the answer yet because it's only been one game, sort of. I mean, we had the other game that Clay sat, but they all sat, and so they went with a baby dubs game. We need more data, and you're right. The next time we're going to get that data is Monday because Clay Thompson on the back end of a back-to-back, -back, in theory, will not play. He might sit the, the Houston game the day before. Maybe he'll sit the front end. If I'm, if I'm running the show, that's what I do okay. because you can, beat, you can throw out the baby dubs and probably beat Houston, and then you save everyone fresh for New Orleans. That might be the way they play that like, two-step. I mean, you haven't won any road games, so I don't know about this whole, like, oh, they could probably beat so-and-so. without. I don't know if they can beat anyone with everyone. But, <laughs> but whatever game he sits out, one of those two games, you're probably going to get a Jordan Poole start. If he busts 35 points again on somebody, well, uh, now there's another log on the fire. And we need to build more data um, because this is the Golden State Warriors and even Clay Thompson, even Clay Thompson cannot be above the team. And, and, and so we'll keep saying it over and over. We're not there yet. I'm not giving up on anybody. I think better days are still ahead. Hang in there, Clay. Totally. There are better <laughs> days ahead. I think that there I think that there are there are better days ahead for Clay Thompson. But that was interesting last night. That was interesting last night because if Jordan Poole if he's going to find a different level because he's playing next to Steph and he can ease his way into games, it's like being a starting pitcher versus being a reliever. Some guys love it. Some guys can come in with runners on. Some guys need to be like, i got to find my curveball and work my way through, and if I give up a run in the first inning, that's okay. And we, right? But, so it's a totally different thing. And I don't know how Jordan Poole, with this particular team, would be at his best. And I don't know what is best for the team as a whole. Right. But that was interesting last night. It was mildly they, interesting They haven't me. looked that good before, and I don't care that it was the Spurs because they played all kinds of bad teams, and they've lost to most of them. Right, but that team in that spot, San Antonio, at the tail end of a road trip, and 
That's a good matchup for Golden State because I think Bonte's right in terms of teams that have given them trouble on the road this year. They're teams that are fast, young, and athletic, and that's not San Antonio. And I know they've won a small handful of games the Spurs have this year. What, they've won as many games as Golden yeah, State I think has. they have the same record. Both teams are 6-8. and eight. But that team yesterday, last night, looked slow and disinterested. And so, yes, that's a piece of data. Jordan Poole, on his bobble night, by the way, his bobblehead night. Yeah. So, a little extra bounce in his step. He gets the start. It's a pool party and all the rest of it. I, for one, am not taking that as too much data. Now, to your point, if it happens again, and Clay's going to sit either Houston or New Orleans, you would expect in a back-to-back scenario, if it is New Orleans, let's say Clay sits that game, and Jordan Poole has 34, and you win on the road at New Orleans, well, now, to me, we've got some real data. Last night, I'm not really taking that as anything more than a team that was totally overmatched, and Poole had a nice game. You know how you keep a dynasty going? You know how we keep talking about how hard it is to do? There's sort of one example already in this city of how you keep a dynasty going. It was the San Francisco 49ers from 1982 to 1994. They kept it going for 12 years, and they actually switched, um, if you will. I know that not a lot of people uh, put Steve Young in the dynasty, the 49ers of the 80s, if you will, but... They were able to hand the baton from one great to another and keep going and win another championship. And there's one thing that has always stuck with me, and you always, as a fan, you hate it at the time. You hate it in the moment. And we would hate it if in some way Clay Thompson's shine gets denigrated here at the end of his career or the back half of his career. You hated it at the time. But years later, you look back and go... I get it. Jerry Rice, Ronnie Lott, Roger Craig, Joe Montana, they've all got something in common. They all ended on a different team. They all had unemotional decisions made about them. In fact, there's a documentary on Joe Montana where you can learn all about why he's still mad at the 49ers today. And essentially, if I had to boil it down to one thing, why is Joe still mad? Because the Niners didn't have the respect that an all-time great deserves. Well, they got Steve Young and they won another Super Bowl because they didn't have a respect for an all-time great. I'm not here to be a champion of, ah, just blow off the people who've done good for you. That's not what I'm saying. But unemotional decisions do have to be made when you're a great team and you're trying to stay great. And the Warriors might have a few unemotional decisions to make this year. Does Klay Thompson's role lessen? Does James Wiseman and Jonathan Kaminga stay on this team? They might need to be traded. I, one of the reasons I think James Wiseman is heading to Santa Cruz is to hide him. you got to hide that guy right now. Because every day that he is on the pro roster... Every day is a bad day for his trade value because one of two things is going to happen. He's either going to come in the game and look like a baby giraffe or he's going to stay on the bench. He's going to get a little DNP next to his name. And both of them are bad for his brand and both of them are bad for his trade value. You have to be unemotional on some level when you're making these decisions if you want your team to still be good. You want to go on a victory lap and have that be the year? Go right ahead. But you're not going to have that end up in June basketball. It won't work. So this is not a good enough team right now. Unemotional decisions are going to have to be made at some point. Yeah, but these are totally different discussions, in my opinion, because you're talking about Clay Thompson and whether or not you should start him. That's a very minor discussion because it's ultimately more important on how many minutes does he play and is he a part of the finishing lineup? And if he's still in the starting lineup and you want to diminish his role and play him 24 to 26 minutes a night, that's a different story than have him come off the bench and if he still plays 34, 35 minutes when he's able to ramp all the way back up. Those two things are completely different in terms of his impact on the team. So if we're talking about not starting him or lessening his role, those are two different discussions. I don't think that either is going to happen at all. And now if Clay continues to struggle at this level and the team continues to lose, then maybe you take a look at that very thing. But the starting five as a unit is still the most productive, best unit 
in the entire league. So to me, it makes no sense to shake that up for your first eight minutes, seven, eight minutes of a ball game to change what is the best unit. You're going to start the game with the best unit in the sport. That to me makes too much sense to where you would change it. The James Wiseman thing, I, I think it's interesting what you say about you have to hide him because you're right about him being on the roster because he kind of stands out at 7-1, either in street clothes <laughs> right. or, hey, why isn't that seven one guy playing? Meanwhile, Bob's calling teams, hey, uh, you guys want Wiseman? No. He looks good in a collared shirt, I'll tell you that. So the only way that this works is if he goes to Santa Cruz, plays, gets comfortable, and then comes back and is able to then join the rotation and look like the the top pick that he was. Uh, eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven. I'm with you, by the way. I'm with you. I didn't know, uh, no one's benching Clay yet. No one's benching. But last night was interesting. It's very very interesting. I put it in a two point two on a scale of one to ten as far as how interesting it was well, for me. I I, I know it, it it's was just, I, not even an eyebrow raiser. It was a. You know what's fascinating yeah. to me, though? I'll tell you why it's interesting. Huh. This is fascinating to me. Uh-huh. And, uh, and and certainly, I mean, you, you want to bench Clay, you want to start Jordan, let's get into it. Uh, what do you see with, with, with all of the, the lineups and whatnot? 888-957-9570. Thank you, Twitch and YouTube. Uh, appreciate you watching. Uh, hang with us for, uh, for the morning. We really appreciate it, and you can text in as well. Same number, 888-957-9570 on the Xfinity mobile text line. I find it fascinating that a team would come into last night at 5-8, and eight, and we would all watch it and go, there really have only been a handful of quarters this year where they look like a good basketball team. And then they go out and blow someone out, kind of for the first time all year. Like, who have they blown out off the court? The Lakers a little bit on opening night. This is Nothing's been easy for this team. And Thank then, you, Zaza. And then they have an easy night. And, and we go, <laughs> but it, it was the Spurs. Wait, really? That's your answer? You're going back to... These are the Warriors of last year, and so they should just flick and dismiss the San Antonio Spurs. They haven't been able to do that to anybody. They have not won a road game yet. So, I, 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 like any NBA victory for this team right now, needs to be put under a microscope to figure out what exactly it was you did right and, and try to replicate that. Because what we saw last night, they haven't looked like that all year. Against anyone. Yeah, they, against the Lakers, they looked good. Sort of. And the you know, the with, Lakers were so bad. They and the missed Lakers every are shot. Yeah. yeah, and last night, the Warriors were humming. They looked good. And Steve Kerr talked about it in the post game about how connected they were, how they defended without fouling. These are things that they haven't done at all. Offensively, Jordan Poole was an eruption. But as Bonte said, when the starters went to the bench, or some of them at least, they were down by a point. So... It wasn't so much as they just blitzkrieged him early. Jordan Poole had a great game. Steph and Draymond were able to get copious amounts of rest. That was just one of those games where you were a lot better than San Antonio. That was a tough spot for the Spurs. Game one of a five-game road trip for San Antonio. Warriors were bloodthirsty for a win after the struggles they've had. That was a tough spot. So I'm more interested in how does it look against Phoenix in this next game can Jordan Poole, Oof. you know, if Jordan Poole likely going to the bench, Clay Thompson will be back yeah. by all measurements. Can Jordan Poole play like he did last night? Or is him coming off the bench so damaging to Jordan Poole that he's not going to be able to have that kind of game? 